This video is called The Bible Riots, and we're going to be looking at how nativist beliefs that we studied earlier this week is going to turn into an extreme example of violence in Philadelphia. So the story all begins, of course, with the Bible. In the 1840s, as you know, many Irish immigrants are moving into the United States, specifically into big cities in the United States, where there's available jobs and housing. One of those big cities is Philadelphia. The public schools in Philadelphia at the time do daily Bible readings, and because Philadelphia had a mostly Protestant population, the version of the Bible that they used to do Bible readings out of was called the King James Bible, which was the Protestant version of the Bible. As more and more Catholics and Catholic immigrants go to Philadelphia, they start to say, hey, we don't want to read this Bible in schools. They're supposed to have religious freedom. We don't believe in this version of the Bible. We want to be able to read our version of the Bible, the Catholic version of the Bible, in schools. So Philadelphia says, all right, you know, that, make, that makes sense. So in 1844, students are able to leave the classroom um, during the Bible readings in schools if the Bible passages are disagreeable to them. And in some cases, they were even allowed to bring their own version of the Bible to do Bible reading in school. So it was a, a, an attempt at a compromise to an otherwise what could have been a very difficult issue. But as you can imagine, that isn't the end of the movie because that wouldn't be a very interesting story. So this Bible compromise that seems to make sense, it works for a little while. Um, people stop talking about it. However, teachers in school eventually start to complain that this multiple Bible reading thing isn't really working out because all these students have to leave the classroom when they're doing a Bible reading or there's multiple versions of the Bible so it kind of makes reading the Bible out loud like pretty difficult with different groups and different books. So they say, you know, we need something else. This isn't working. It's, dis it's disrupting our instruction. So the school board says, okay, um, since it's disrupting your instruction, why don't you stop Bible readings for a while um, and we'll figure out a different way. By the way, the leader of the school board is an Irish Catholic. So when students come home and tell their parents that Bible readings have stopped, their parents, the Protestants, get extremely mad, um, really, really upset by this decision to stop Bible readings in school. And they accuse the school board who leader, who is an Irish Catholic, of trying to stop the Protestant religion. He's a Catholic. He doesn't want us to read our Bible in school anymore. And they get really, really angry, um, not as... This is an angry mob over here that looks pretty happy. They looked much angrier than that. So these angry Protestants are very upset and they are blaming the Catholics that Bible reading has stopped in schools and that it's an attack on their religion. So things are pretty bad between the Catholics and Protestants. Now, taking those feelings um, that exist between the two groups over the Bible, what ends up happening is um, nativists start to give demonstrations and speeches um, basically putting the Catholics down. And we've already studied what that group looked like last week. So this one nativist group decides to give a speech on the evils of the Irish in a 100% Irish neighborhood called Kensington. Probably not a good idea, but they did it anyway. So these nativists get up on this platform and they're saying the Irish are scum, blames all the problems on the Irish, and the audience is pretty much all Irish people. So at first they're being all right, they're ignoring them, but eventually this heavy, heavy rain just comes out of nowhere and soaks the entire crowd. So people are running for cover, and as they run for cover, you know, they, they keep talking that this Irish, um, this guy keeps bashing the Irish in public, the speaker, and all the nativists are still bashing the Irish, and the combination of the rain, people running around, eventually the Irish people that are hearing this speech in their own neighborhood, eventually just lose their patience, and violence breaks out. Fights and riots and all sorts of things happen. So that's not the end of it. The next day, after this initial scuffle between the nativists and the Irish, the, nativ the nativists come back to the Irish neighborhood the next day, but this time they have guns and they are angry, and it's a major riot breaks out. So the nativists are attacking the Irish, the Irish are fighting back, um, the nativists have guns and much more people because they came armed, and they start to do all sorts of crazy stuff like burning buildings, looting buildings, destroying things. The police are understaffed. 
eventually the militia will have to be called in, um, but the violence is going to last for three days before it can get under control. So the, the extent of this damage, um, at the end of this three days of battling between nativists and the Irish Catholics, in Philadelphia there's a hundred homes of Irish immigrants that are going to be burned to the ground in this Irish neighborhood. 20 people are going to be killed, over 100 more injured from the violence, from being shot or burned or trampled or whatever the case might be. It was a really ugly scene. Two Catholic churches, places of worship, are burned to the ground, one of them being St. Michael's, which is a fairly famous church in Philadelphia. Burned to the ground, totally destroyed. Um, and you think that this outbreak of violence would have stopped future violence in the city? Well, not even a month later, another smaller riot breaks out where 13 more people are killed. And when it's all said and done, all this violence is blamed on the Irish by the court systems. So to conclude the, this rather brief look at this topic, the tensions between Catholic and Protestant citizens of Philadelphia over the school Bible readings is really where this starts because it causes a lot of anger between the two groups. Um, that anger leads to speeches being given against the Catholics. And one of those speeches given in the Irish neighborhood um, tempers kind of get out of control and the riot begins. The, the violence in this Bible riot, as it's called, lasts for three days. There are many people that are killed or wounded. Hundreds of buildings are burned to the ground. Churches are burned to the ground. It's a very terrible scene. The end result, more police. Riot prevention is put into place, but there's really no long-term solution found to solve the problem. Um, this hatred between the two groups is going to continue. Um, other smaller violent outbreaks are going to, to occur. Not, not close to this magnitude, but other violent things are going to happen in Philadelphia for the next 20 or so years while this whole nativist, anti-Catholic belief continues on.